Hello, everyone. I'm Kieran Sheehy. I'm delighted to be given an opportunity to talk to you today. I'm a little bit left of centre. I nearly said I'm now for something completely different, but it's not completely different, actually. There is some interesting issues that work across the three. I really enjoyed the previous presentations. Thank you. Um, inclusive practice through keyword signing, addressing barriers to accessible classrooms. Now, that sounds like a very dull title because it's a very dull title, but it does contain, I hope you'll see, some really interesting ideas and practices that are potentially revolutionary, but should be every day. And I'll start here. So I'm going to start with the backdrop of inclusive education. Now, it's an interesting term, it's an interesting idea. As we see, it's part of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Loads of countries have signed up to it all around the world. Everyone says they're doing it. Um, it's part of the uh, UNICEF position that, you know, children's rights are flourishing alongside peers in mainstream settings. And when we ask people about it around the world, as we have done, getting, as we have, I'm getting very royal here, <coughs> as we have done, as I have done and colleagues have done, people generally agree with it. Um, however, there is no universal agreement about what it actually means in practice. So when we look at uh, what's going on around the world, as we did in this study here where we looked at all the red countries, we looked at their policies and practices um, uh, concerning uh, children with special educational needs and inclusive education, we found that people were working towards this idea of inclusion in some respects, but it was being worked towards in inconsistently. Um, so if you, uh, we then uh, looked at a handful of those countries in detail and visited the countries and interviewed parents and teachers. But they, um, they didn't interview children in this one. But the idea is, so we have this idea of inclusion, that everyone should have access to inclusion, everyone, uh, to education, so education for all. Children should have a right to education and they should have a right to education with their peers. Um, and what we found was that there was uh, lots of policies on... Um, inclusion at the policy level, sorry, obviously, policies at the policy level, but very little on what inclusive education actually looked like. What, what happens in a classroom where you have very diverse groups of pupils working together and doing well? How do you achieve that? So this is another study we, we did, which was a, a, a systematic literature review, where we looked at um, research that had measured outcomes for pupils in situations where um, pupils in, in this research with special educational needs were part of the class and where produced positive outcomes for everybody <coughs> in terms of uh, social emotional development and or learning outcomes. Um, that's the report. Um, you can get, I'll put the reference up. It, it's just a big thick report. You know, if you want, if you want to go to sleep, um, really, if you're struggling one night, just to open it up. There's, I think we started off with 3,000 over 3,000 articles, weaned them down to 8, 876 through, through a process which is detailed for you, painstakingly, <laughs> page by page. You you'll probably won't make it to the interesting bit which comes at the end, which is that one of the key things where we got positive outcomes for these diverse classrooms was social engagement being intrinsic to how the teaching was done. In, Intrinsic to the pedagogy. So social engagement was a tool by which teachers taught. Um, and there were other features of it too, but that's the one I just want to focus on it today. Now, what does this mean for us? So it means that if we want to have pupils included <coughs> with peers in diverse classrooms, mainstream classrooms, then communication must be positioned at the heart of inclusive classroom practice. Because if you can't communicate, if people can't understand the language context of the classroom, they are effectively excluded. They might be physically integrated in the classroom, but they can't access all these wonderful, wonderful techniques and stuff that, that seem to work and seem to do a good job. Um, are you with me? That's two big, thick reports, summarised painlessly, I hope. And if you want to look them up, you can. Now, I was asked by uh, colleagues in Indonesia to go and work with them on inclusive Indonesian classroom projects. Indonesia had signed up to developing uh, an inclusive education system and we had children now uh, entering schools, in inclusive schools, who previously would have been um, segregated from schools perhaps not in education at all, so children with, 
a variety of learning disabilities or physical disabilities. So kids <coughs> who would not have been in schools were now in schools. How could we enable effective inclusion for them? So our first priority was the communication. And to, just to give you a little, put it in perspective, um, all that. Um, that's where the volcano's going off as we speak. Um, Indonesia has hundreds and hundreds, <coughs> hundreds and hundreds of languages. It's the most ethnically diverse country in the world. It's the most geographically um, islandy. I don't think that's a ge any geographers. What's the word for geographically islandy? It's very islandy. It's got the most islands of any nation. And so it's culturally diverse, it's uh, ethnically diverse, linguistically it's, it's incredible. And so how can we, the, the government's got this challenge of, uh, as well as the idea of um, disability or special educational needs, of also uh, having a diverse language environment and providing inclusive classrooms for all of these pupils. So, what we hit on... Uh, Keyword signing. Now, keyword signing, I'll just check my next slide. <coughs> That's good. <laughs> is, um, is not the same as the sort of signing that you'll typically see in a bubble on the telly. It's not the language of the deaf community. It's where you use signs to indicate keywords within a sentence. So I might be talking about all the exciting things I'm going to do today and the things I'm really looking forward to later on, dinner and lots more work. But I signed dinner because that's the thing that's most important to me. You know. um, so it's one, one sign per few words just to indicate the, uh, the, the key points. And that, it's pretty straightforward. Needs some signs here. Um, now, what, why, did, why, why did we suggest this? Why keyword signing? Why did we go for keyword signing rather than going for technology or having symbols up on the wall or um, just not doing it? Um, keyword signing using this uh, methods of communication it's really supporting communication it supports language comprehension is learned and understood relatively easily and it's when I say rel learned understood relatively easily by children for whom language is problematic who, can't, who have problems accessing language environments so it's learned quickly it's free a big issue for us was that a lot of these solutions required expensive technologies or expensive programs or things that require big investments. Now, Indonesia, parts of it are very, very poor and we needed something to be free. And keyword signing is free and can be passed on for free from one person to another. Um, there's no technologies. You don't need your Wi-Fi. Some parts of Indonesia, Wi-Fi to die for. Oh, your phone is leaping out of your pocket. Other parts, nothing. Um, it can be used within everyday interactions. One of the issues we had that some of the technological solutions to this uh, communication barrier was that it took children out of those social interactions within the classroom that our previous research has shown they needed to be part of. Not the case with keyword signing. It's part of the interaction. Um, children without special educational needs and disabilities typically enjoy using it like to do it, we'll turn up for lunchtime clubs to find out more about it, and we'll petition to do it. That's not to say it happens, but children like it. Um, there's a lot of data to show the benefits of this approach, lots of experimental data. Uh, it improves the language and communication development of children with severe learning difficulties, and those children who don't have any spoken language. Um, I've put references to lots of... Um, Papers up at the end of the program, you can follow them up and you'll see that you can see the data there. Uh, it makes the child's communication easier for others to understand. Uh, one of the issues we found in some of the classrooms in Indonesia where children could communicate some, in some spoken form, teachers were turned off for them because the child's speech was very hard to understand. So the teacher gradually talked to them less and eventually excluded them and then they were out of the classroom. Um, this gives the child a way of supporting their communication in a way that the teacher can understand, their peers can understand more, as well as supporting the development of their spoken language if they could, or their language comprehension. Um, the positive effects of using this approach uh, are better than if we just use keyword signs alone or if we just talk to them. The latter is kind of blindingly obvious, but it does get said a bit. So, here are two... two 
Can you see those? Okay. So, two uh, photos of my first two pilot schools. So, I'll, in terms of the process, um, we'd reviewed evidence about the kind of teaching approaches that worked. We then reviewed evidence on keyword signing. We then said, okay, what type of keyword signing do we want? And we developed an approach drawing on some bits of the Sign Along UK model, which is a particular approach um, that has uh, very clear descriptions of the hand shapes that are used. And that was important for us because it, it can pass it on over a telephone. You can write it down. And it's very clear. And given the huge number of languages in Indonesia, we need something that would do that. It ticked a lot of boxes. Uh, I'll show you on the left is a science lesson being taught um, uh, for this group of children. In fact, there's, there's six or seven tables in that classroom. It's quite a big classroom. And the teacher's doing science there. Uh, all the children in that classroom sign to some extent. But only about oh, a third of them, perhaps less, have any type of special educational needs. And we're talking about status. This is a high status school. When we, this teacher, the head teacher, who is, I'm forever grateful to, decided to try, try out, become a pilot school, it really was a big plus because of the status that it conferred, as you'll see why that's important a bit later, the status that it conferred on keyword signing. It made it a thing that the high status school did. And on the left is one of our state schools there. And they're doing I Plant the Tree song. I, it's pr you're probably familiar with planting banana trees. I, I don't know if you do that a lot here. In the, you know, the hot season, you're out there planting the... But they, there's planting the banana trees there. And that's in their um, class. And that's a, 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 a state school. So we, we, we tried it out in, in two schools. Um, and this is one of the questions that we were asked. So, Kieran, you come from the UK. You use keyword signing. It's a UK thing. You can find it in some UK. It's obviously really, really good. The evidence, you've convinced us. You've shown us evidence from all these studies that keyword signing works. And spot. If it's so good, why doesn't everybody do it? Why is not everybody using it? Why don't you see it in primary schools? And also, this was the thing that used to um, bug me years ago when I was an educational psychologist. I was quite interested in the early days of this. And... Um, I would go into lots of schools that had, uh, in, the UK, in Northern Ireland, the UK, you have Makaton. Do you know Makaton? Yes, some nods. nods in, so Makaton, you see schools, we're, uh, we use Makaton in this school. All our children use this type of keyword signing. I would go in with my little Adidas bag, undercover into the schools, and you didn't see anyone signing. People said they did, and they might do it in a signing lesson where they're teaching one child to sign, but the teachers wouldn't sign in general. Or there might be one fanatical signing teacher over there who's signing all day long, but she was isolated on her own. Why is, why is it, so why people aren't signing? If it's good? If, it, if the evidence suggests it works? And this is some early research we did, and we repeated this in Indonesia to develop training, that teachers hold particular beliefs about signing that seem to be quite immune to the training they receive when they do their training with Sign Lung or with Makaton or with um, Love in, the, in Dublin. I went to the Dublin one. And, um, or in Holland and wherever, the different keyword signing approaches. So here is one school across the top, teacher one, teacher two, teacher three, teacher four. And here are some of the things that they believed when we asked them um, about keyword signing, about which kids would use this in your school and their beliefs. So as you can see across the first one is, you go all children, not one of the teachers that we interviewed in this school thought it was suitable for all children. Not one. It's not suitable for all children. Well, why is that? Why is that? Well, it's only suitable for non-teachers. Oh, non-teachers. Non-speakers. Um, so that this, these two teachers, teachers three and four, would only use it for children who did not speak, non-vocal children. They would use it to support their communication. Whereas teacher two would only use it for speakers only to make their speech clearer, but they wouldn't use it for the non-speakers. Uh, some people think you need a minimum level of comprehension to use keyword signing, so they wouldn't use it for some children if they felt they were below the level they felt was appropriate. Some would say they wouldn't use it because it was detrimental to speech. Others would use it because it encourages speech. And the other one, the idea that non-speakers will not gain speech was a belief that Held. So these sort of unvoiced beliefs seem to be shaping, well, were shaping, um, the practices in the school. So if you're a child 
who would get all those lovely benefits from keyword signing, and you go to that school. As you go through that school, your exposure to a language support system that will help your development is erratic, even within a small school that has, we do this type of thing here. And it'll be on the prospectus, you know, on the thing. Um, so that was one thing we were interested in. Then we started looking at um, people's beliefs about how knowledge is created. And uh, in particular, their beliefs about... Because we're trying to explain these type of things. Why, why is this happening? Why is this happening? What's, how can we unpick it? So we're putting out... This is largely questionnaire data to groups of 200 teachers in different parts. of. This was in Indonesia now. And this was all to inform our training, to try and tailor our training. To, 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 so we could get over that thing of, if it's so good, why don't we do it? And we're trying to tackle those different opinions that seem to be immune to whatever you, we say. And it seemed to come down to this, that people's beliefs about how children learn, about how knowledge is created underpins all those other things on the top. So yes, we love inclusive education. We, oh, it's great, all children need to do that. Oh, this is a good thing. But then all the little differences seem to arise from these fundamental, these fundamental issues. Um, these unvoiced beliefs shape, and the interesting in the paper we did recently, um, we could predict teachers' beliefs about inclusive education and keyword signing from their responses to things like, how should children learn? So teachers who believe that knowledge is created primarily through social activities tended to say, all children should learn together. Uh, we, want to, we like children working in groups. Um, a classroom should not be quiet <laughs> all the time. Uh, teachers who believe in a direct transmission view, a quiet classroom, we say what needs to be done, we give clear answers and the children can learn that. Unproblematic transfer tended to feel that these children either shouldn't, shouldn't be in the mainstream school, shouldn't perhaps be in even special schools, or, uh, and they wouldn't really de develop much wherever they were. And keyword signing, they didn't want to do. Or it would only be for those children over there, but not in the, the mainstream school. Um, and this became also linked to issues of stigmatisation. So issues of how children are different are stigmatised within society. So that was a sort of a factor that we had come across in, the, in England uh, previously, but it, it's magnified in the context of in Indonesia, the stigmatisation of children with disabilities. And furthermore, the stigmatisation of teachers who teach children with disabilities so you don't want to do keyword signing because it will make you look different and therefore you're stigmatised and you do not want to be a teacher who uses keyword signing because it makes you look like the sort of person who hangs around with these children who are stigmatised. And when we asked people, we'd say, Is this, what's happening? And we found you have to be very careful with your research methods because if, if, if we ask people face-to-face -face to do interviews, oh yes, there is some stigmatisation, but it's not in this school, it's over there. But when we asked similar teachers through questionnaire methods, we get uh, result, results that indicate stigmatization is in most of the schools for some of the staff, a significant proportion of the staff. Um, so, challenges. In, so that was my life's work in 15 seconds. Hope you like that. Um, challenges and opportunities for policymakers with an inclusive agenda. Um, one of the ways forward, which we're putting together with Indonesia, is supporting particular types of training within initial teacher training. There's some good stuff been going on in Scotland. I hate to always be saying in Scotland, but it's often in Scotland where the good stuff is going on, um, about giving teachers space within their initial training to reflect on the types of practice they're doing and to think about their own views about how learning happens. Uh, and when that happens, teachers tend to move towards a more social model of understanding how learning occurs. And those teachers are the ones who are more supportive of inclusive classrooms and also, for us, of keyword signing. But the keyword signing at this point is a positive spin-off from that. Post-qualification training for a range of professionals. Um, what we found it, it, in situations where keyword signing is happening, the child leaves school and they go into an environment where the policemen they meet, the nurses they meet, 
can't communicate with them and don't understand their communication. And so investing in training for um, professionals, post-qualification, not just in education, should be reasonably important if you want people to be understood and valued. Um, authorities' own materials. I like, please just ignore, I've seen about 18 typos in all my work. Just please forgive my typos. Uh, should include keyword signing, which is kind of interesting. Interesting. Um, if we look at different countries that advocate um, supporting language, supporting communication, um, uh, there's very diverse practice in how they present materials for the audience. And some is inaccessible to the people who they're talking about. Um, so, if an, if an education system seeks to be inclusive, then the visibility of keyword signing in the everyday life of schools can act as a, ro I like this, a robust, simple indicator of the success of this endeavour. If people are doing it, you should be able to see it, and you can see it, and you can see when it doesn't happen. So it's a very simple, very easy to evaluate, very easy to see. But if you ask people about it, they will tend to give you answers that reflect all those things we talked about before. So it's important to think about the training implications and how we train. So um, at the moment in Indonesia, we're moving into developing uh, a lesson study approach where we have uh, teachers presenting lessons that are viewed by other teachers and they comment and they discuss. And we find that's really important. So we've got uh, teachers talking to other teachers about how they're using keyword signing and the teachers can see the teachers using it with a, a diverse class. So it's very real. So it's not sort of just some sort of highfalutin theory. It's we see a teacher teaching a class of kids who are, we might be deemed difficult to teach, then discussing it with their peers. That seems to be very important. And also, we give the teachers who are doing that a high status. Status seems to be, I don't know, we have, this is only in the context of Indonesia, but if it, we can give this activity status, it seems to have much more impact, certainly in take-up then from other schools and teachers changing their practice. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much.